When you sleep at night, do you prefer to sleep like this? Or like this? Like this? Or maybe even like this? You know, I don't sleep very well at all. I tend to get easily distracted. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. Look, regardless of what position you sleep in, or maybe even what nighttime habits you have, today I'm gonna show you what position you should be sleeping in if you wanna see not only the best gains in the gym, but to do so with the least amount of pains. You see, you might be very well aware of the stimulation of muscle growth happening in the gym, but did you know that the actual muscle growth is occurring far away from the gym? It's when your head's on the pillow at night. But if your sleep position is actually compromising your ability to get restful sleep, or if worse, it's actually causing orthopedic issues that leave you in pain so you can't even train hard enough to make new gains, well, that's a problem. So today I'm gonna to cover the most common sleeping positions and show the good, the bad, and the ugly of each to help you arrive at the one that's best for you and your body to get you the gains that you're looking for. All right, so let's start off with what I think is the worst sleeping position. But as my mom always taught me, if you're gonna say something bad about somebody or something, at least start by saying something nice. And I'll start by saying, let's say the good, and that is, this is pretty comfortable. Or at least the people that sleep this way will swear that it's the most comfortable way to sleep. But that's where sort of the compliments end because this is really horrible for your body. You see, what we're getting when we sleep like this is an exaggeration of some postural elements that are ultimately gonna come back and bite you. The first thing is the exaggeration of this lumbar curve. Because gravity is pushing down this way and we sink into the bed itself, we're getting excessive strain into that extension. Anybody that has any type of stenosis issue, this would leave you almost incapable of standing when you got up in the morning. You don't wanna do this even if you don't have back pain. If you were to just stand up right now, even with a healthy back, and just lean backwards a little bit, about 10 degrees or so, and stay there for a minute, you wanna crawl out of your skin by probably the 40 second mark. It's just not comfortable, and putting that strain on your back consistently overnight is a bad thing. If you work your way up the kinetic chain here, you see that the thoracic spine is actually rounded because you wanna hug the pillow that you're on to support your upper body. That creates just more thoracic rounding. Take that with you into the gym when you try to do a set of front squats, and you'll quickly realize how that's not setting you up for success either. Continue to work your way up the kinetic chain, the shoulders themselves are really not getting a break either because they're in an internally rotated and elevated position for, oh, eight hours a night, which is a recipe for impingement, which again, take that with you into the gym and any overhead pressing exercise, and that's not gonna really work too well either. And finally, even just to be able to breathe from this position, you're gonna have to turn your head either to the right or to the left. You wanna talk about muscle imbalances here. It's not a good thing, guys. Overall, this position itself is just a recipe for disaster, especially when there's many more you can get into that are gonna be much kinder on your body. And that brings us to position number two, and that is the side lying sleeping position. Now here guys, it depends on how you lay on your side that matters. You see, there's three different options here. You can have your legs long like this, or you can pull one leg up and keep one leg down, or you can pull both legs up in more of this fetal position. The fact is, we have to look at the same thing that was happening in the last position and analyze the biomechanics of each segment of your body. In this long leg position, we have a few things working for us in our favor. Number one, with the legs held a little bit longer, we have less likelihood that the psoas will get really tight overnight, which contributes, as we know, to low back pain. But what we do have is a chance to create some low back pain another way. With this top leg maybe kind of leaning down at this angle, we can get a little bit of a lateral shift or a little bit of a stress on the low back by pulling down on the leg, but we can fix that easily by taking a pillow and just putting it in between your legs like that. So we can create a more neutral position of this leg on top of the bottom leg, which will create a much safer spine. Moving up into the mid back, we see that the kyphosis problem that we had in the sleeping on your stomach position is actually alleviated here and looks pretty damn solid. But we do have some issues up here as we work into the shoulders. You can see this shoulder here can tend to get a little bit internally rotated if you put your arm underneath your head like that. What I like to advise is to take the arm and put it flat on the bed underneath the pillow to get a little bit more external rotation. And every little bit matters when we're talking about sleeping in this position for a long time. The last thing we look at is the neck itself. And we can see that the goal here is to support your neck and not have it either too high by putting the pillow too far underneath your head like that, or having your head lean back like that. So the best thing I tell people is to make a fist and put it on top of that bottom arm. If you can get that fist right there in between your cheek and that bottom arm, you've got a pretty neutral position here of your neck. Now what do you have to do? Simply fill the gap with the pillow to replace the fist itself, and now you've got a really nice neutral neck position to put you in a more comfortable side sleeping position, but that's the key. Sometimes people say, this position isn't too comfortable. 
Which might lead some to say, can I sleep in the fetal position because it's a lot more comfortable? I'll say yes, except there is one caveat. When you sleep in this position with your knees pulled up, you're actually just sort of inviting something you're probably doing too much of already during the day, and that's sitting, because you're basically doing a sit in a side-lying position. We know that the hip flexors can tend to get tight in this position, so you wanna be wary of that, and if you're gonna do this, make sure you're stretching your hip flexors with this stretch right here, both before you go to bed and when you first wake up in the morning to give yourself a chance of loosening that up to make sure it doesn't become a problem long term. You do have the option here once again of using the pillow and putting it between your knees to maintain that more neutral position. However, I find that in this position, it's usually a lot less stressful on the hip in the low back because the knees are brought up into more of a flex position. And finally, some might ask, but Jeff, I am actually most comfortable when I pull one leg up to my stomach and leave the other one down. How about that? And the answer to that is, I'm not really a big fan. Because even though the rest of the mechanics here are maintained in a more proper position than it would be lying on your stomach, what you are doing here is introducing rotation at the lumbar spine. And if there's one thing the lumbar spine isn't really good at, it's rotation. Allowing this leg to sit up here and then drop down causes rotation right in the spot that you don't want it. Guys, I'd recommend not trying to do this. I'd stick to one of the other two positions already covered. Which brings us to position number three, and that is laying on your back. And by the way, are you alive? Yes, I just had a very long night last night. I was very distracted. So we're talking about laying on our back. There are some very key things that I want you to be aware of. And we start again, as always, at the low back. And what we get from this position is definitely a more neutral back position, right? However, we know that if we already have tight hip flexors, what can happen is because we know that with the legs out straight, it's gonna pull a little bit, arching your low back that can lead to you waking up very stiff in your low back, we might wanna take a pillow and put it up underneath the legs just like this, which is going to ease some of that hip flexion strain and create a more flat back on the bed. Working our way up into the thoracic spine, one thing you wanna be mindful of here is how soft is your bed? Because if your bed is really, really soft, what's gonna happen is you're gonna sink down more and more into it, which is gonna to lead to excessive kyphosis or rounding of that thoracic spine. We know if we take the pillow itself and get it too much under your shoulders, that's only gonna exacerbate that even more. You wanna make sure that your bed is firm enough to allow you to keep a flat back and make sure that that pillow, at the very least, is not up under your shoulders. Talking about the pillow though, and the neck itself, we have a very important consideration here you need to maintain the neutral back position. We can't have ourselves with a pillow so high that our chin is digging down into our chest. Not only is this an uncomfortable nightmare orthopedically, but it could lead to apnea issues and breathing problems because you don't have a clear passage of airway here. What we need to do is make sure that this pillow is allowing that neck to stay in a neutral position. Instead of keeping the pillow under our head like that, I like to utilize the back part of the bed and tuck the pillow in as you can see here. And what that does is it creates almost a little bit of a downward slope toward the back side of the pillow, but it creates a higher lip on the front side of the pillow. That lip on the front is gonna actually fill that kyphotic area of your cervical spine nicely, but it allows the head to stay back, which keeps that breathing passage open and makes breathing a hell of a lot easier. We know that the shoulders are also one final consideration, and how you position your arms when you lay here is important. Of course, you can lay here with your arms at your side. We call that the resting pose or the corpse pose. That's okay with me, but if anything, if you do have the ability to get your arms up over your head, just to sort of open up your shoulders a little bit more and get some external rotation, that's certainly an option too. Either way, guys, my favorite position for anybody when they're sleeping at night to maximize your ability to get restful sleep, which is going to lead to better gains in the gym because of it, it's gonna be right here on your back all the time. And so just like that, you can rest easy tonight knowing that you have the right sleeping position to make sure that you are maximizing your recovery and therefore getting better gains in the gym, as I said, without the pains. What are you doing? I'm looking at the next videos. See? Guys, remember, it's not just what you do in the gym that matters, it's what you do outside the gym as well. If you're looking for a comprehensive training plan, we have them all available for you over at athlinex.com. If you found the video helpful, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. Tell me what you want to see next, and I'll make sure I do my best to do that for you. And also, if you haven't done so, click subscribe, turn your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.